so I did a fresh out of the theater reaction for this when I got out of the film. And when I uploaded the video, part of the title was, This Will Make You Angry. Be prepared. Proceed with caution. Make sure you bring tissue. And I cannot stress that enough. You know, in my opinion, be mentally prepared for this film. Because it was a lot for me. It may not be a lot for you, but it was a lot for me. I, I was angry. I was upset. I was frustrated. I was furious multiple times watching this movie for a number of reasons. So let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my Till Movie Review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I don't I don't know guys if, if you can tell already, but this is uh this is pretty difficult for me to talk about right now. I'm struggling already and I was getting a bit emotional <clears throat> when I was uh trying to write down some notes right here to uh be prepared and organized, but I'm probably gonna be all over the place with this review. Um I don't even know how much I'm gonna edit it. So if that turns you off, I'm sorry, but that's just where I am right now. But this is the movie Till right here. We're finally here about Emmett Till based on a true story. It takes place in 1955. If you were subscribed to my channel, you knew I was going to most likely cover this movie. There, there's been two trailers that's come out, and I did react to both of them. So if you would like to subscribe, you can see you know, how much I did anticipate or not you know, as far as this movie is concerned. Um, but it was something I, I, I was looking forward to. Uh, not all the way. I mean, you know, actually, my exp I, I'm, I was interested. I, I'll just say that I was interested. Now, this movie is being directed by Miss Shayone Chukwu. And I'm very sorry, ma'am, if I butchered that. I actually tried to look it up to see how to pronounce it, but I was not able to find that. But this is the director right here. If we just scroll down and look at her filmography, at some of the past films that she directed, Clemency... Alaska Land, a couple of other shorts, TV series right here. I am not familiar with any of these titles, but if you are, please let me know down in the comment section below. And I just will say, when I was reacting to the trailers for this movie, I was a bit disappointed that there was not a black American in the director's chair directing this movie. You know, but sometimes I, I do want that lineage connection when it comes to telling real life stories. I felt the same way in Judas and the Black Messiah with Daniel Kaluuya taking over the role for Fred Hampton. I just wanted the best representation possible. And I only think or I think the best way to do that is when you actually have somebody coming from the history, you know, to be behind it, to put it together. You know, while that wasn't the case, he was still a great actor in that film. He did a phenomenal job and I gave the film like a 9, 9.5 out of 10. So I'm not going to be biased and let that get in the way of my rating. Same thing here. And I'm bringing this up because this sister right here is from Nigeria. She is Nigerian American. She was born in Nigeria, but she moved to Oklahoma when she was about one years old. And then a few years later, moved up to Alaska. So she did grow up in the United States. I did not find that until I was doing my research for this review. And it does make me happy. Why does it make me happy? Because she grew up here in America. She just understands the culture and the history much better. Yes, racism, white supremacy is a global thing that needs to be abolished and replaced with justice. But when you're here in America, when you grow up here, no matter where you was born, if you grow up here, you just have a better understanding of how things work in the history opposed to other people that weren't born here that came over when they was either a teenager or their younger 20s or anything like that. So it made sense. I'll just say this. After I was, I saw the film last night, and as I was taking notes, it makes sense why this film was so good, because she was born here and understands everything, and I will get there. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, before I talk about all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this movie is all about. In 1955, after Emmett Till is murdered in a brutal lynching, his mother vows to expose the racism behind the attack while working to have those involved 
brought to justice. You know, it's interesting as I'm looking at this synopsis, I'm also looking at the rating for this movie too. And after seeing it last night, I could have sworn that it would have been rated R, but it's not. It's rated PG-13 and it does come in at two hours and 10 minutes. And that's very interesting to me. I talked about my expectations just a second ago, saying that they were kind of non-existent. But one thing that I was expecting from this film, for it to be truthful, it, it to tell you exactly what happened, but for it to be a light film, you know, something that everybody would be able to stomach easily and possibly learn something. But my goodness gracious, going into it with that mindset is the wrong way to go about it. You know, you have to be prepared, in my opinion. And I will say, guys, I and I probably will put this in the title of my video, but this was possibly one of the best and worst experiences I've had in the film in quite some time. So the first thing that I really did like about this film was the tone, the aesthetic, just the feel of it. It starts out, of course, in 1955, Chicago, Illinois, where Emmett Till is from. And right as the film started, you can just kind of hear a deep sigh throughout the whole auditorium, which was filled with mostly black people. I don't think I saw any white people except for you know some of the organizers of the event. It's like everybody knew what they was about to get into. Just like, damn, you know, like, it, it, am I really ready for this? You know, I'm, maybe I should have, you know, had second thoughts or something like that. It also feels weird for me to use positive words while describing this film as beautiful you know, with it being surrounded by such a horrible event. But the cinematography in this film was beautiful. It was a very nice and colorful film to look at. It really did bring 1955 to life in a good and a bad way. In a good and a bad way. The young boy playing Emmett Till is Jalen Hall. Never heard of this man before, never seen him before. But my goodness gracious, man, if... I, I am in love with this actor right here. He did such a great job of fulfilling the role of Emmett Till, this 14-year-old child. And, and when you see him on screen, you fall in love with him immediately. He's just like the textbook definition of innocence. This doesn't know anything, just is a, a happy black boy joy, just wanting to have a good time singing and dancing, loves his mother with all his heart, misses his father who passed away in World War II overseas in Europe. And I mean, you just want to protect him. You just want to hug him. You just want to be his friend. You just want to lead and mentor this kid because there's just something about him. He has a spark. He has a glow in him that should never be put out. And unfortunately, it was. But they did a great job of casting. As soon as you do see Emmett Till, like I said, you fall instantly in love you know, with this character, which, which makes this whole experience that much harder to get through. On top of the tone being a point in the aesthetic and you falling in love with Jalen Hall as Emmett Till, there's also some other supporting characters as well that you like fondly. That goes to Frankie Faison. I'm a big fan of his going all the way back to Coming to America. We also have Whoopi Goldberg and Sean Patrick Thomas. Man, I haven't seen this man in a while. Last time I've seen him, was I think Save the Last Dance, and then he popped up in another film a number of years later, but this guy needs to get more work. But besides Jalen Hall, Whoopi Goldberg, Sean Patrick Thomas, and like I said, Frankie Faison, they did a great job too and deserve all the recognition they can get as well. And guys, while the movie is called Till, the main actor, actress in this film is Miss Danielle Deadweiler. Here's her page right here on IMDb. Beautiful woman, beautiful sister, and if we scroll down, she was in The Heart of They Fall as Cuffy. I saw that and loved it. She was also in P Valley as Jolie. I covered that with Struggles with Tyra. And I don't remember her in that as well. And that's just weird to me. She's in the Half a Half Nights, a show that I did not watch. But she was also in Atlanta, Champagne Pappy. And that was in season two. I remember that episode, but I don't remember her then either. But I will say, guys, now I will remember this woman from now until the rest of my life. There are not enough words to describe how well she did in this performance, but this is not hyperbole. I'm not trying to exaggerate, but man, she knocked this one not out of the park, but she knocked this into the stars. I mean, her performance was effing outstanding. I mean, I'm about to cry right now just thinking about how good she did. It is ridiculously scary and terrifying how she shows so much emotion and pain and torment 
as she was acting on screen. And it, it just, man, we're talking cosmic level good. You know, like, give this woman the Oscar right now. I don't care who comes after her this year or before. If she, if she doesn't get... If she doesn't get recognized, man, it's a problem. Cause God, she, I, I can honestly say she is one of my favorite actresses of all time right now for what she did in this movie. And I'm I'm just trying to decide, like, did she it, was her performance just so well, or was she just emoting her frustration of everyday life? You know, as, as as a black woman. Oh. You know, my, my mom is still alive today and I love her so much. And uh I just have a new definition of a mother's love after seeing this movie. I mean, I, I just remember growing up as I was turning 15 to 16 years old and, and my mom just being so concerned, just like Brenda, you know, you gotta be careful, man. There's just some evil people out there. And I understood her. I, 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 it made sense to me. It did. But at the same time, I was just like, mom, come on. Everything's going to be okay. You tripping, you worrying, you know, I'm not stupid. Even though I did do stupid stuff. We all did. You know, like, I just have a new understanding, a new comprehension of what all mothers go through, all black mothers go through when they send that shit, when they send their child out in the world, not knowing if they're going to come back. And it's, it's nothing that, it's nothing that anybody should have to go through. And I just feel so foolish because I thought I knew, but I don't, you know. And I, I do, you hear that all your life. A mother's love, a mother's love, a mother's love. But you will never know if, unless you're a mother. And I just I just feel all I know now. And that's because of her performance. And I, I can't believe I'm crying as much in the review. But I, I'm just saying, I mean, you may not react the same way as I did, as I'm reacting right now. But Jesus Christ. The way she performed, man, just, it was so many standout moments of her performance, even in the first act. When she's sitting at a table playing cards with her friends and she's smoking a cigarette. And just when you look at her hand motions as she's holding the cards and not being able to relax, she's driving herself crazy because she's worried about her son. And the thing is, we know what's going to happen. This is not a fictional story. But when she finally gets the news that her son Emmett is dead, found in a river, it's crushing. And the way they showed this scene, just that they use the camera trick that has been in Hollywood forever to where the cam I don't know how to describe it, but the camera focuses on it focuses on the character's face, but the background, the everything in the foreground is like zooming in or out, but the face is standing still. I don't know how to describe it. It's you've been used before. We've seen it before, but it's not often used. But when it's done the right way, it's really effective to get your point across. This is the best way I've seen them use this in any film. And the way that she fainted on the ground, man, I was just so pissed off. But going going back to Emmett, man, he was so innocent, man. He was so oblivious to his surroundings. It just didn't register with him the danger that he was in. And it just took a split second. I don't want to tell you. I mean, you know what happened. This is a true story. I don't want to tell you exactly how it went down in the movie. But his surrounding people, his family, you know, they dropped the ball for just a millisecond. It's kind of like if you're out and about and you have a child and you turn your head for just one second, you turn back around and your kid is gone and you're panicking. Like, oh, where's my kid? Where's my child? Where's my child? That's kind of like what happened. You know, his family was the parents. They he, was the mother and he was the baby wandering off and he got himself into some mess and how that snowballed into us still fighting in the streets today in George Floyd, etc. I say that because this event launched the civil rights movement. If you did not know, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't. And even when he admitted the cardinal sin, I guess, of whistling 
to a white woman and we know Carolyn Bryant lied and she's in this movie too. <laughs> His performance as well, he just did not know the damage that he did that he did. And everybody else around him did. They was like in a nervous panic, like they was on fire. And he had no clue. And they did a great job of expressing that. Performances in this movie were out of this world, in my opinion. I'm sorry, but going back to um, kind of jumping around here, and going back to early in the film when it comes to uh, Mammy, uh, his mother, you know, she called him Bobo. There's other standout moments besides her playing cards is when she was in bed trying to go to sleep and she was like, I just want to go up to um, or down to Mississippi, the South, you know, to get my son back. I can't stand him being away for another week. It was just driving her crazy. It was she was acting as if she was sending her son to war on the front line with no weapon, blindfolded with his hands tied behind his back. And you know what's crazy is while that may seem like an exaggerated statement, that's exactly what she did in a way. Unknowingly, but she did. And just seeing how when he was on the train to go down south. Another standout moment was just her performance as watching him ride away. It's very significant there. I mean, there are key pivotal scenes in this movie that it's just a freaking rock house. And then as he's going down south, they goes into a tunnel. Screen turns to white and it just opens up like this is a whole new world. Like going from the north to the south is a different dimension. Like if you watch Stranger Things, you're in the normal world and now you're in the upside down. That's how they treated it. And it was it was scary. And guys, this happened in 1955. My dad was one years old. Not my granddaddy, not my grandfather, my dad, my daddy, my father was one years old when this happened. If if Emmett Till was still alive today, 2022, 1955, that's 67 years plus 14, he would be 81 years old. Don't let people try to shame you or talk crap talking about this happened so long ago, hundreds of years ago. Man, no. My daddy was one years old. Emmett Till should still be alive today. Carolyn Bryant is still alive today. I have so much I want to say, but I'll get my YouTube channel taken down. But she needs to be brought to justice. And the th scary thing is, is, and just taking myself back out of the review, and while I was concerned with the direction of this, who, who did a phenomenal job, the, the, the Nigerian-American sister, she was born here. She understands. Some black people, our immigrant brothers and sisters, don't understand. Like I said earlier, racism, white supremacy is a global thing. But still here in America, black Americans, we are our own special, unique group. That is not saying that we're better or more superior than anybody else. We're just unique with our own history. One, we built the richest country in the world. And if somebody is not born here, they don't understand that. This is not just me talking, and I'm going to make my point in a second. These people are on Twitter. Instagram, TikTok, making these videos, saying that, hey, I'm black, but I'm not your people, and y'all need to get over it. Slavery was such a long time ago. If you are not born here, there are just some things that you don't understand. Some people can still come over here when they're a young adult and understand. Some people can't. The reason why I'm saying that is it relates to this movie because Emmett Till, he just did not understand. When he went through that tunnel and came out on the other side of the South, he did not know the world he was living in. He was too innocent. He was too oblivious. And unfortunately, it got him killed. Everybody else knew not what to do and what not to do, but he didn't. It just didn't click. It just didn't register. He grew up in Chicago. He grew up in the North. If you grew up down south, you would get it. You would understand. You would know what to do and what not to do. You would know what to say and what not to say. You would know what to think and what not to think. But Till didn't know that. So if I'm in the middle of a war or if I blink the wrong way, I want to be surrounded by people that understands, that knows how to put their right foot forward. 
So when it comes to representation of my stories and film, I want somebody to understand. This woman does. She, she gets it. I can tell with the way she put this movie together. So if I turn anybody off during my trailer reaction saying, hey, I'm disappointed that a Nigerian American is directing this movie, I was wrong. She did a great job. She, she stepped to the plate and did what she needed to do. Whatever she said in the interview room worked. But going back to Danielle, the superstar of this movie that did such a phenomenal job, so many standout moments, like I said, of her playing with the cards, her in bed and the train ride, her requesting to get the body back to Chicago, her actually receiving the body off the train when the body was revealed to her. And guys, they showed the body. They showed the body twice, and it was not pretty. You know, the the coroner tried to, hey, I need to prepare you. She said, pull back the sheets. And um, it's like I felt her soul and her spirit both leave her body at the same time. You know, I, I just wanted to jump through the screen and hug her. You know, her performance was just so well. And they showed the body. And not only that, guys, they didn't, they, there was audio of Emmett Till being tortured and beat. So they showed the body in color. Because if you Google it now, I think it's just in black and white, but they showed it in color, the full body. Only thing they didn't show in the body was the private region, and th there's no reason to show that. But they showed the f they showed all the way down to the toes, all the way up to the, his head. Twice. And the first time, I was like, okay, man, I got through it. The second time, I was like, God damn. And when they, when they, you, you heard the audio of Emmett Till being tortured, this 14 year old boy screaming for his life in agony. Y'all, I mean, it, it, I'm, I seriously, there was two points in this early, in the first half of the film, I, I was about to get up and walk out. I, I clenched my head rest like this. And I was like, oh, no, you can do it. You can do it. I was that upset. Everybody in the theater was crying. It was nothing but <laughs> the whole time. The whole, after the first 20 or 30 minutes, for the, the, the duration of it, Everybody was crying. So you probably saying to yourself, man, like, why do I want to see this, Brandon? Why would I want to sit through this? I'm seeing how you're going through this right now, a day after you saw the film. Why would I want to see this? I still recommend you see it. I mean, if you really want a good depiction, representation of the Emmett Till story, this film is perfect. I think this should be taught in schools. I think it should be shown to our youth. And not just shown to him, like actually sit down and talk to him after this movie and like, look, this is the evil that is going on in this world right now. And it wasn't a long time ago. This shit is still going down today. And you need to be prepared. I, I mean, I'm not a parent and, you know, you don't want to brainwash your kids. And, of course, you have to wait till they're, uh, um, you know, at a right level of maturity. But, man, we, this needs to be instilled in the youth as, 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 long, as, as young as possible. So that we cannot repeat the same mistakes. Because another great thing that this movie did was it showed how unified black people. You know, before I even say that, what was hard, even before we got to the murder, seeing black people together and so unified during these years in the 50s and 60s, et cetera, because we were more unified back then. That was a beautiful thing to see. And even after the trial and case, just seeing how so many black people w was on code and organized, trying to eliminate this system, not just uh, this one isolated in this incident, it was inspiring, but at the same time, it broke my heart because it, it seems like it was all for nothing. It launched a civil rights movement, movement, which was quelled by white supremacy, and then it's repeating itself again in, in ways of, of Black Lives Matter, the movement, not the organization. I was talking to um, one of my activist buddies a few years ago, and it was just like, B, it seems like we're starting over every 30 years. And the, the figure of blame can be pointed to some people, but I don't necessarily want to do that. I will say this, you know, black people, if you're alive today, it is not your fault that we're in this mess. It's not. So don't beat yourself up about it. However, it is your fault, and I will call you out. It is your fault if you allow us to stay like this, if you do nothing at all. The thing is, you don't have to listen to me or anybody else for instruction. And I don't even know where I'm in this review anymore. But you don't even have to listen to me for instruction. You can be your own leader. 
you know, increase your education. You can do that at, at, on your own. Increase your political education. Increase your economic education. Increase your historical education. Just look at everything that happened in the past as far as black people trying to climb over the mountain. See where we triumph. See where we made mistakes. And, and plan accordingly from there. Join a book club. Go to Google. Go to YouTube. There are book clubs online to where, you know, they'll have a live show where they'll read one or one book every two or three months and have a call-in show. Even if you don't read the book, you can just sit there and watch and follow along. And I'm, I'm just saying all this because as I'm watching this, before the crap even hits the fan, I'm just like, man, I know what's going to happen. And it, it seems like all this hard work, all this grinding that black people did, it, it was for nothing. And that can, that's what can knock the wind out of you. Because it knocked the wind out of me. It seems like there's just no hope. What happened in 1955 is happening today in 2022. You know, they had uh, Medgar Evers in, in this. Uh, he did a, a good job. And um, they had some boule people. If you don't know what boule means, look it up. And it, it was just nice to see just black people coming together, trying to organize and galvanize together to try to solve this problem. And they were just angry. They were furious. Like, look, man... I understand your boy's dead, but we got to, you know, and there was infighting as well, and I just don't blame it. And there was one character in this movie. He represented alone just a lot of black people with a certain defeatist mindset. But at the same time, I don't want to beat up the brother as well. I didn't live in 1955. I don't know his life or his past. I didn't walk his shoes, walk in his shoes, you know. But it was some black people mad at other black people. And it's like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Well, if I did this... This would have happened. And both parties are right. It's just frustrating. Man, this is stupid. Black people, what do we do to deserve this? Nobody can name one thing. And I am tired of living like this. I am tired. And I am not going to live like this anymore. I'm not. I don't know what else to say, man. This, this, was, uh, this was an incredible movie, man. I don't I don't I I don't I had a, I don't have any negative things to say about it. I really don't. I really don't. I I was more upset watching this movie than I was Detroit, you know. Like and I'm glad I, I I'm 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 an emotional wreck right now. I'm glad I saw it because I've been tripping the past for years as far as what I need to be doing and um I just you know I can step it up as well, you know. Um it's a sister I met in college in 2003, sweetest thing in the world. Uh, she's an activist here in Dallas, um, specializes in local politics. A couple of years ago, and she knows I'm interested in, you know, aware and somewhat conscious as well. And um, a few years ago, she was like, hey, B, look up uh, this man named Amos Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson. Never heard of him before. And I looked him up. He was a black American psychologist. I think he passed away in like 1995 or 96. Man was an unapologetic genius. But he's not with us anymore. But he did write a lot of books. A lot of wrote a lot of wrote a paper lot wrote a lot of papers, articles. You know, you can look Google him, find his old videos and work. Uh, but he did write this right here. Um, Blueprint for Black Power: A Moral, Political, and Economic Imperative. For the 21st century, issues of manhood in black and white. That's what the gentleman looks like right there. Now, a lot, a lot of you have heard of Dr. Claude Anderson. I suggest you read all of his books as well. Of course, it's, it's just core must reading. This too. It's a thick ass book. But I dare you to Google it and just look at the table of contents. And the only reason I'm saying this is, the only reason I'm bringing this up is I don't want to just, you know, review a film or talk about a movie about what some people consider as trauma porn and not provide any solutions. Like, I'm tired of living like this, but not provide any solutions. The solutions are out there. It's just going to take a long as time. It's going to take all your life to apply, but that shouldn't matter. I mean, you plan on living the rest of your life anyway. You know, that time is going to pass by anyway. So... Whether you make it to where you're 65, 75, 85, 95, or 105, if you want to live that long, you won't want to be in the best, best position possible. You don't want to be in the same or worse. You want to be able to pass something down to your kids. But just look at the table of contents. 
I don't think you'll be disappointed. There's hundreds and thousands of books out there that you can read. No, you're not going to be re- able to read everything, but read as much as you can, learn as much as you can, increase your education as much as you can, and teach your gosh darn children, teach your youth. Don't have them growing up in this world thinking it's all sunshine and rainbows. Oh, man. Um, I hope I didn't say nothing crazy. I don't even know how much I'm going to edit this, but no, nah, I'll just be repeating myself. Every our performances is off the chain in this film oh i forgot to talk about this y'all the score we gotta talk like yeah the score was serious we i I gotta give them credit i i i I can't believe i forgot to talk about that whoever did the music in this needs to get a raise who did it who did it i'm gonna look them up and jam this in the car okay who okay abel core i ain't never heard of you before bro if you're a dude or i think you're a guy you are, yeah, you, man, from Poland. Y'all jamming like that? Y'all, y'all, the the strings, the, the violins, the cello, the bass, whatever, was serious in this film. The score was off the damn chain, man. Man, brother? Yeah, you, you, you not, yeah. This was good. This was good. This was damn near Hans Zimmer good. I it, this stood out, man. the The score was moving in this. Yes, yes. Oh man, guys, um, I'm done. I am. Um, I'll give my rating for this at the very end of the of the review. Uh, but for now, guys, yeah, I'll give my rating for this at the very end. But for now, that is just my opinion, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, helping me reach my next milestone. I'm trying to get to 50K. So happy boy out. If you do subscribe, you're going to get movie reviews, spoiler movie reviews, series reviews, movie news roundup show, interviews. And then, you know, I'm covering some TV shows on streaming. And uh, right now, Atlanta season four, I need to update that prior book three, Reds and Canyon season two. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, that this review is all over the place. You know, it, it is what it is. But, you know, if you don't like me for that or if you don't want to subscribe for that, hey, I understand. But I just kind of wanted to, you know, give it to you raw. But if I had to rate Teal out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a, a perfect 10 out of 10. It's a perfect 10 out of 10. I, um, I I don't have any problems with this movie. It's one of the best movies I've seen this year. I got some of the best performances from Miss Danielle Deadwaller um, I've seen ever. You know, I, I really got to sit and think about, like, you know, you know, top actresses, top act, no, just acting period, men and women, because she, she's up there now for me. Um, and I, I just got to say it one more time, like when she was in court and because the dumbass white supremacist was trying to troll her gaslight was talking about, hey, well, how do we know that the body is really your son's? We can't identify it. Yuck, 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 yuck. And she, the, the, the speech, the monologue that she gave of how she's able to identify the body as a mother and the way that she was blinking her eyes. Man, I felt the fire. Like, it was scary good. She, the way that she first addressed the press, it's in the trailers. The speech she gave to black people at the end, saying that if something happens down south, that's not about me, that's not about my people, but if something affects black people, it's all, I don't, I'm paraphrasing. Man. It's, it's, this was perfect, man. This is perfect. This was um, this was hard, but ten out of ten, guys. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace. <laughs>